your source for all things Texas Tech. This is the Ask Level Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, what's going on? Welcome into another episode of the Ask Level Podcast. Alongside Chris Level, I'm Choice Woodman. This podcast, as usual, brought to you by our friends at Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. We've arrived, Level. One of the best weeks, best couple of days in, in sports coming up this week. March Madness has arrived. How are you feeling? Yeah, th- this is one of those uh, this is one of those like weeks or weekends that it, it's like it should be kind of if you're a sports fan, it should be really sharpied on your calendar yes. as you find out when the next year's is going to be to where you kind of like don't bother me, nobody in the house playing anything. I'm shutting it down for cuz to me <clears throat> it's the whole weekend. It's Thursday through Sunday night because, and then like when the last game ends on Sunday night, I'm like, well, well what in the heck am I going to do now? You know, like I, I've been sitting here watching meaningful basketball and some of the best reality TV that there is. And now, now it's over. Like I've got to wait for some days and then you, you get to the sweet 16 and you, you, you try to manage, but yeah, that first week of the tournament, it's what we love about sports, man. Um, and, and it's, uh, it's the most unique sporting event that there is too, uh, because it's impossible to script yes. what will happen. Yeah. Impossible. Uh, as the, as the, the, the country will find out and all of your, all the people listening that fill out brackets, you, you'll be like, yeah, busted, uh, you know, like anyway, uh, after I the mean, first day, the second day, whatever. I mean, last year, I think we had, and it's not usually like, this crazy but i think we had what two five seeds a six and an eight seed in the final four um i think we it's been several years more than a decade since there hadn't been a team uh lower than a five seed in in the final four so i mean it it seems like it just continues to get crazier and crazier as far as the script and it's it's because, and you, we're going to answer some questions about this kind of thing, but yeah. it, it only gets uh, more like this, not less, because of the portal yep. and NIL and, and um, all, all the things that go with it because every team is old. Every team has players. There's not a team in this deal that's just going to trot out a bunch of freshmen that just can't believe that they got here and, like, we'll see what happens. And, yeah. no – <clears throat> so I, I just think that uh, that dynamic has changed too, but like everybody's going to put, you know, the Yukons or the Tennessees or the Houston's or the Purdue's or, <clears throat> you know, pick, pick, pick your favorite, you know, top seed one or two seed, and you're going to roll them all to, to Phoenix. And then, you know, what, what was it? Uh, was it Purdue that lost to Farley Dickinson last year? Um, was it Virginia that lost to you? Uh, what was it? Uh, UMBC. UMBC, the Golden Retrievers. That's right. Um, and and then you're just going like, what? What just happened? Like, <laughs> well, and that's it, yeah. you can't script it. And um, and may, maybe some of the top seeds survived the first weekend, but anyway, it's just uh, anyway, I, I love it. I'm I'm thrilled that Tech is involved with it. It makes oh, yes. it a lot more meaningful uh, when you like it anyway and then when your team is involved it, it makes it that much more uh fun and uh the red raiders get a hot hot team and uh the nc state wolf pack yeah uh coached by kevin keats who was semi on the hot seat prior to the acc tournament had lost yep. seven of nine <laughs> and then march madness happens the the beauty of, sure. of the sport and postseason play he's like he flipped that quarter, and he landed on heads five straight days, man. I mean, <laughs> what are the – imagine how we would be talking about it had Central oh, yeah. Florida showed up on Tuesday in Kansas City, and then they cut the nets down on Saturday evening and had run through the gauntlet. 
imagine what we'd be saying about Johnny Dawkins and and the Knights had they pulled that off. Because that's that's the equivalent of what just happened here. Sure does. And I, I wouldn't have. I mean, there ain't no part of me that would have thought anybody was capable of of such things. But kind of like what Kimball Walker and UConn from several years ago did the same thing. Right, and as which I want to get into that matchup. We'll we'll break it down and talk about that. Uh, but before we do, let's look backwards to to what you did in Kansas City, the the trip to Kansas City. You continued some hot play in the first game with a uh, a win over BYU, but then Darian Williams gets hurt within that game. Hold him out, precautionary or not, uh, against Houston. And you see a, a good spurt within the Houston game, but ultimately the number one team at that time in the country too much. So just overall takeaway from the, the trip to KC. Well, um, I think my overall takeaway is that you broke the University of Houston. They used <laughs> all their uh, all, yeah. all their shot making and defensive prowess and, and all the, the, the Kelvin Sampson arms folded poses and everything is used <laughs> all up against the Red Raiders because they had nothing left no. uh, for, for the uh, for the clones <laughs> the next day is they get just run out of the gym. No. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought I thought you were extremely impressive against BYU. You controlled that game from the tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, and, and even BYU went on a. I think they went on a 15 0 run they to did. kind of try to make it interesting. And then you answered with back to back threes from uh, Joe Toussaint and Darion Williams. But yeah, the, the, I mean, and, and so, yeah, you wanted a, a crack at Houston and you, you were playing to win. But as soon as you kind of get word that, man, he's tried to go, but it's just not going to work out, you're thinking you, you're just kind of dead in the water. And to, to, you know, like Chance McMillan, Pop Isaacs, Joe Toussaint, you, you, Robert Jennings, you got guys just doing whatever they can and scratching and clawing, but they just didn't have enough help around them, mm-hmm. uh, especially against the top team in the country. But that that game was semi-costly for uh, the Cougs, too, uh, that was. Houston game, because Juwan Roberts is a major piece to their, their team, and they don't leave, uh, you know, the city of you know Kansas City with him being healthy either, uh, and he missed a lot of that title game the next day. That's the hard part about that setting is it's back to back. Had you had a day in between, I think Darion Williams could have played for you and played against the University of Houston. I think he would have maybe not at a hundred percent, but he would have been able to play. But just with a, such a quick turnaround, it just it's just not enough. And, and I think they were trying to think big picture, so. Uh, but you know, I, I love the win over BYU. I think it bumped you a little bit. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I think now that we've got the seedings, no, you look back on that stuff and none of it really matters in some ways. And I think overall, I think what you saw is the conference tournaments don't move the needle like we, like they used to, or like we would like to think, can it kind of hurt you? Yeah. I mean, if OU beats TCU, you know, d- d- is that a, you know, is that a a situation where, you know, they, they make it in? I don't know, but, you know, TCU won and OU yep. lost. And yep. so I, don't, I don't know. But, I mean, I, I think that, too, Iowa State rolls through. They beat the number one team in the country, and then they, they're not even the top two seed or even close to it. And so it it, it, it tells you that, you know, maybe the, the, the conference tournament doesn't really move the needle. It's for fans. Uh, it's, it, it makes money for the league. It, it, it showcases, uh, you get Shaq in the house, you're handing out title belts, but as far as, you know, ultimately what it does for you, as far as the tournament goes, yeah. the, the four letter one, I don't know. It's, I mean, what it's for is for what it did to or for Oregon and for NC state. NC state. That's what it yep. did. Which Bid those, Steelers. those two get, yeah, those, those kept other teams out of it this time around that we're hoping to get an automatic bid like in Oklahoma, like a Indiana state, St. John's, those sorts of things. So um, yeah, I, I, KC ended up going, uh, I think decently. I mean, you could say that uh, you, you get that win over BYU and you sit there as a six seed going in and you mentioned this NC state team. Now you mentioned the name Kimba Walker. But I think hey, level that's kind of let me let me let me ask you. Let me just pose a question for you. Okay. This is like an either or. And so you because you said Kansas City went good for you. So if I decent. tell you if I yeah. tell you that you show up and 
you lose to BYU and you come away totally clean, you're probably not feeling great about things. You got some extra rest, but it's like, dang, man, you just, you, you, the last time we saw you, you know, and against a team that, you know, you, you could have beaten and, and you just didn't get it done. So that scenario or, or the scenario that you had a win over BYU, but, but maybe you get dinged up and you're not as clean mm. coming out of it. And then you kind of get worked over by Houston. What, which do you like the way that it, it happened or would you rather have been like, man, I'd rather just take the L versus BYU. I don't think it affected our seating that much. And then have Darion Williams be, be, be healthy and all that. I, I, Again, I, I I get that he got yeah. hurt in the in the BYU game and all that, but I'm just I'm just trying to to you know, yeah. play it out and because it I don't know how much it ultimately affected your being a six seed in Pittsburgh versus being a a seven in Charlotte or I I don't know how much dynamic there was at play on, on it moving you, but anyway, I just thought I'd toss that out there. Well, based off of what what was the the tournament, I think it said. Tech was a 23 overall seed, so you were the second best six seed. My guess is it didn't move you up more than two spots. I don't yeah. think it moved you one win, I don't think, in a conference tournament like you're talking about. So the answer, I guess, it, it gives you a decent taste in your mouth that, that you played yeah. well again. But if it's at the cost of your maybe <laughs> most important <laughs> player, yeah. then, yeah, yeah obviously then- I'm – I'm and it's not like that. you were just going to guess and be like, you know what? Hey, I'm just going to sit you out before this game, before you <laughs> right, play right. just to make so. sure. Because I think that's kind of what Porter Mosier, you know, he had, he was missing three dudes. Yeah. Uh, and he in was that thinking game. Yeah. That, that he was maybe in already or yeah. 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 So, um, so the, you, you mentioned Kimba Walker a little bit ago, but I think level Kimba Walker and those teams are the exception to the rule when you see teams, go on these long tournament runs most of the time. And I think what tech fans should hope for is that NC state is worn out by the time you get them on Thursday night. Yeah. I mean, when you get this draw here, you know, cause I've had people come at me with very opposite thoughts and processes. Okay. Or, or, or theories. It's like, well, that's just great. We got screwed. We got the hottest team in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did. Um, you know, uh, it'd be hard to argue that. Uh, right. They pulled off a minor miracle. But you, you also got a team that wasn't in this deal a week ago. They, they were extremely yep. average. You look at a lot of the, the metrics and data, and it's like they were not a top 100 defensive team most of the year. They... They struggle to score at times uh, and all that. But, yes, they are hot right now, and you're playing them right now. Uh, are they tired, or are they just going to be riding momentum? We will find out Thursday night. I'm not yeah. real sure. But momentum is a scary thing. It and is. So, you, you know, but here, here's here's the way I looked at this. Like, the one, there is no easy draw in this deal. Anybody that like looks at it as like they got an easy road. You you just haven't paid attention to the NCAA tournament like ever. You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't exist. And yeah, they'll be they'll maybe be a, a team that gets to the final four by just blowing everybody out. Heck, the Red Raiders were that team, what, in 19. They blew everybody out uh, yeah. except for except for the Zags. Zaga. Yep. Uh getting to uh getting to Minneapolis. Yeah. But and and so some team can can maneuver their way through it, but it's just it's it's really rich for me to see somebody point out hey they got a cakewalk. I mean I just I just don't know if, if much of that exists if ever because everything's tricky and even more so now than it used to be because of the portal and and all those things. No, but I like the draw from this standpoint. The mid majors are the teams that scare me to death. Absolutely, because you can tell your kids till you're blue in the face these dudes can hoop. They've got all conference guys. They won 30 games and they only lost three, whatever it may be, like the James Madisons, the Samfords, the South Dakota States, the Fairleigh Dickinsons, and, and and all those kinds of teams like last year. How about the um, other two 11s? New Mexico and Duquesne are both yeah, see, pretty I mean, darn probably, good teams. Which is funny because uh, Duquesne is playing BYU and like I'll literally be staying at a hotel – I think I may be able to throw a rock across the river and hit Duquesne University from where we're at. Yeah. Um, 
uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, we're going to Pittsburgh and Duquesne's going, uh, to Omaha. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the Duquesne setup is, is right near where we're staying in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, but, but that's what, that's what scares me. Like, I think you can look at your team. Grant can look at his team now and it's easier, not that they wouldn't have been focused, but you're always trying to find an edge, but it's easy to sell them on an NC state, a power five or power four league team that just won. They freaking just beat. Syracuse, Virginia. Virginia's had some recent success, Tech fans, as we're all aware in the NCAA tournament. They yeah. also have been UMBC before, too. So whatever. Um, and, and you've had uh, you know, and you beat Duke and Carolina. And and oh yeah, by the way, Louisville, who in most years is a handful, but this year they're just awful. But th- that that's very real. That's tangible. That's something that every kid in that locker room can go, yeah. I mean, I I get it. I better, we better lace them up tight. I just think that's an easier pitch than trying to sell. Hey man, Northern Kentucky is legit guys. I'm just here to tell you, they can embarrass us. I, you, you see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I like the I like the draw from that standpoint. Um, and then I like that, you know, I mean, I'll be rooting for Oakland now. Don't get me wrong. Oakland oh, yeah. shoots a lot of threes. They're very up tempo. Uh, Kentucky doesn't want to guard much at times, like they yep. didn't want to guard in the in the SEC tournament, uh, and and they they're just trying to outscore you. So I'll be pulling for Oakland, but um, you know you got Kentucky right there too. I just so I, I think you, it's easy to get your kids' attention. That's my point. I guess uh, I, I think you're exactly right. And and what I like too is the two biggest factors, at least in my opinion, in the NCAA tournament are coaching probably second coaching and guard play. I mean, those those are the two things and your guard play has been better in the last few games. And obviously Grant McCaslin has proven himself uh, to be a pretty darn good coach in year one, not to mention he, he went through a tournament, not the tournament, but a tournament pretty well last year uh, can get players attention. So like that you've got those things on your side going into, uh, into this one. Level, uh, starting with the questions, there's quite a few of them, so we'll try to get to as many in as possible. Trisha on Twitter asked, what was the difference between the basketball teams that played UT and the basketball team that played Baylor? I think both had the same personnel available. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, one, Texas just – they, they they played harder than you that day, and I think against Baylor, you played harder. Mm-hmm. It, it's hard to it's like kind of that intangible uh and that's why houston has been so good this year kelvin gets his guys to play like empty the bucket every night for the most part and uh, they've got enough shot making and all those things but this is also why you know iowa state is a pain to deal with <laughs> and i think for whatever reason that whether it's the environment or, but, but Texas played like a big time team that night when they beat you. And th- their problem is, is they rarely match that. Yeah. They've been wildly inconsistent. Uh, and that's what's for, it's like, I know what you're capable of. Yeah. I also know what you're capable of, you know? <laughs> I mean, and so sure. that's, the, that's the hard part about coaching. You try to squeeze everything you can out of guys and then be consistent with it is the hardest thing you can. Uh, that you can do in, in coaching uh, to try to achieve. And, but I mean, that was kind of, cause I mean, I think that you, you looked up and you just kind of looked lost. And by the time you kind of started to settle in Texas, had just run off and hit against Baylor. I mean, it's, it's like for much of that game in the first half specifically, like Baylor was just getting punched in the mouth. You were faster, you were quicker, you were more aggressive you took it to them. And yeah, they slowly kind of worked their way back, but that was kind of the the one ingredient uh, that I thought was a bit different. And now you should have an all time sense of urgency, you know. Um, but I don't know if the like the Texas game, maybe that environment got to you, or some of these kids are like got freaked out. I, I really don't know. I don't have an explanation for it. But that was really the one game where you no showed all year. That was the one game. I don't count at Houston getting blown out as a no show, but that was really the one game where you just kind of got blitzed and didn't look like you were ready to compete or had no answer. Um, Agreed. And the yeah. reason that Michelob Ultra bottles were coming from the cheap seats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question. This one we alluded to, but haven't given an answer. Leah asks, how are Darian and Warren 
What are the chances we get one or both back by Thursday? I think that the way that that is phrased, I think excellent. Uh, I, I'll be shocked if if Darion Williams isn't good to go and, and ready to roll like normal. Honestly, I think he yeah. would have been able to, as I said earlier, he would have been able to play. Um, had you had a day in between games, um, and I think he'll be fine. Um, to his credit, he tried to do everything he could to play in that game, and he was very upset that he couldn't, you know, but I, I just think they made a big picture decision and I had no problem with it. It just sucked as you had to right. kind of live through getting your butt kicked in front of a whole bunch of people with the TV cameras rolling and all that stuff without a whole lot of personnel uh, available to you. And Warren, I mean, he didn't have a boot on the other night. Uh, I keep thinking I, I would have thought we would have seen him by now. I think again, I'll, I'll maintain that this is going to be tricky. Um, but I, I, it's not going to shock me if you get some time from him. I, I, I will make this prediction though. If you see him, it'll be off the bench. Okay. I, I do think that's the way that, that you have to do this. I don't think it'll be like uh UCF where you're going to start him and see how it goes. No, I think you'll, you'll ease him into this deal and kind of see, give him a little time. If it ever happens, I mean, we may have seen the last of Warren uh, for all we know, mm. but if, if you do see him, couple of minutes okay how did, how do you feel how did it go and then you know and then then maybe the next stint is a bit longer you know like you know which is tricky when your season is on the line yes it is and, and, and against and you're going against Muhammad Diara who's a beast and you're going against uh uh DJ Burns who's a beast uh yeah. and I and it's all beast. of about 300 yeah, yeah. I mean so that, that these that's the part of why you didn't want to have to get to this point to ease him back in because it's an adjustment for everybody, not just him. Yeah, no doubt. Um, uh, let's go to this question. This was from Kelly. You got a final four prediction level if you want to throw one of them that out. And then he also asked, can this team beat NC State if Tech's not at 100%? I do think they can beat NC State if, if one, they're not at 100%. I mean, I do think you got to have D5, though. Um, and, and he doesn't have to be 100% or, or, or have his uh, monster game. He doesn't, yeah. it's not like he has to, to play it like he did against, uh, oh, I've already forgotten. It was Kansas. against Kansas. Yeah. When he had the, had essentially threw a perfect game uh, yeah. and then wasn't Big 12 player of the week, <laughs> which is Come just on so, now. It's so funny. It, not really. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think you've got a little bit margin for error with this team, and we'll see uh, how how hot uh, NC State is. I mean, I, I just know this. Um, you, you, you better figure out a way, because you weren't great at this this year, you better figure out a way to go on some scoring runs and limit those, because I think if you go on like a 10-0 or more run, I think you win games like 80-plus percent of the time. And I think that there was times where the Red Raiders weren't able to put runs together and like knock teams out. Um, but like you saw whenever you went on a 13-3 run versus Baylor, when they took the lead on you in your last yeah. regular season game, you knocked them out, you know? And so that's the difference. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I and then uh, uh, what was the other question? It was about 100% Is, on NC State. Did, no, he asked oh, if final you have four pick. I, I think UConn wins this tournament. I think UConn's one of the uh I think they're one of the few teams in the country that can win games in different ways. Uh they're not relying on a player per se. They're not relying on I think they can win games if it's slow. They can win games that are fast. Uh they obviously have a coach that's just, I mean, aces right now. Um, and they have, they have a lot of confidence, uh, but I, I think they're also still as crazy as this sounds. I think they're still kind of off the radar in some ways or like underrated. Uh, everybody wants Purdue and Matt Painter to win, you know, like all these people are like, oh, I just yeah. really want Purdue because they've had all these, these issues and, and Zach Eady isn't officiated correctly. And I mean, all this stuff, I don't trust Tennessee. Uh, I don't trust like Houston makes me nervous. Houston is really good, but they are very flawed. If they get another team that can guard and that does a good job of taking care of the basketball, Houston is going to be in trouble because they're they they struggle to score at times 
Yeah. And when they and when their defense can't you know create offense for themselves by taking the ball away and getting right. runouts, they kind of struggle a bit because they only have uh, a couple of guys, Cryer and uh, Sharp, that really can shoot it. And and you know Shed, he's just kind of a, a guy when it comes to offense. He's a playmaker, yeah. but he's not going to go for thirty every given night. He can, well, we saw it, but. But they, they make me nervous. And then I don't know if you trust Carolina, I, but I do trust UConn. That, that's who I would put to win the whole thing. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, I, I have the Red Raiders going, you know, the, taking down the Cougs too, right? So, I mean, I, I have to say that, don't I? Yeah. I mean, I you're I, super yeah. confident, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, <laughs> no, but I mean, if, I, if I was filling out a bracket, I don't think I'm, I'm allowed to, but if I was filling one out, I, I would put UConn all the way through. Yeah. So UConn, uh, if they were to win, correct me if I'm wrong on this, it would be the first back to back since the Joe Kim Noah. Yeah. yeah, Florida. Billy yeah. Donovan. And I, I happened to be in the building when Florida did that. It was, was in that? Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Uh, I had gone to the, how about this day, a sports day? I was at the Masters in Augusta all day <laughs> and then drove to Atlanta about an hour and a half uh away and then was at the title game that night when me and my dad did that that's about good as good of a sports grief. day as you're gonna I was, I, we were exhausted we were sunburned yeah. uh you know but we we were in the building to watch uh to watch it so how about that that's amazing that's mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome for sure okay um a couple of portal questions as we shift over uh one asked with the portal opening up today i guess that was yesterday um or this week for anybody listening. Is there any anyone that you know Tech is interested in? Uh, a couple of different questions like that, and then one kind of grouping in with it, Damarian Williams not being at the selection show. Is he in, in or going in the transfer portal? Okay, so let's do the the Demar one first. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I I don't expect he didn't go through senior day ceremonies. Okay. Uh, but I don't, I don't expect him back on the team next year. Uh, I just don't. Um, he, he's really been a guy that's just been a kind of, that's it. Just a guy hasn't mm -hmm. played much. Uh, if, if any, I don't think he's in the long-term plans. Um, I don't know why he's not at the selection deal, but maybe that's a kind of a, a an indication that uh, right. on, on where this thing is headed. Obviously, with the portal opening uh, the next day after uh, the selection show is is taking place and all that stuff, uh, probably I haven't seen it at the time you and I are talking. I haven't seen that official or anything, but sure. it wouldn't surprise me. I just don't think he'll be back here. Yeah, uh, the end. And when when you're when you're a graduate, uh, I don't you know there's no obligation for the school to be like stuck into having to keep you or whatever. They can yeah. just say, hey man, you graduated. We wish you luck. Good job. You know that whole deal. Um, as far as like who you're interested in, th th this is still in its infancy. I mean, you 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 don't. I don't think people like grasp how much movement is about to take place. Mm -hmm. And it's it's you're just getting kind of an initial wave here. I mean, the the Garrison kid, the starting center, uh, the freshman at Oklahoma State, has been the most high profile guy that I've seen that has gone into the portal. I mean, I think you would be interested in him, but so will three hundred and <laughs> yeah, you know whatever uh, teams that are out there. He was a McDonald's All American. Um, he's six foot ten. He's not perfect. He gets he struggles on defense some, but I, I would like to take a chance on that and see what I could uh, what I could do. So to to wrap that answer up, how I would phrase it is, you're going to be interested in size. You 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 need a post player, maybe plural. Mm -hmm. you, you still don't exactly know what what your roster is going to look like. So this is going to take a bit for this to play out. Um, we're going to talk about it a lot. There's going to be some ups and downs. Yeah, and like, here's the other thing. I'll just toss this out at you. You you need to replace Warren and Joe. You need to replace you know the the Kyron Lindsay spot, the Drew Steffi spot, probably Demarion Williams, not Darian Demarion. Different players, uh, his spot. Yes. Um, you know, and then to kind of just to figure out. So that you're gonna you're gonna bring in three to five, six 
you know, whatever, and then depending on what uh, what your 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 guy's going to do. But here's the tricky thing that I just don't think people like grasp. You could you can make a lot of news and get Brandon Garrison to commit to you this afternoon, for example, mm-hmm. and you could say he could say I'm going to Texas Tech, and you could throw a parade and be all excited until like next September. You you can't you can't lock a kid down anymore. It doesn't. Yeah. So I hate to like say that the portal is like a you know, but I mean, d- buckle up. I guess is my point. Like we we yeah. we're, we're we're a long ways from like uh, potentially having things solidified. Um, and, and like I mean, remember back when you got Devin and Warren? This was like what July. You know, yeah, late June, pretty late. July. Yeah, yeah, Joe Toussaint, his head coach, you know, it, it was in like, it was in mid-May maybe, and then they decide in early, late May, early June. I have to go back and look at the date to be sure, which I think, ironically enough, was that not in Pittsburgh? I think it did happen, yeah. And, and I, I, I want to say, lucky. Taylor, was it was Taylor Swift not at the at the at the arena that we're about to play at? I mean, <laughs> I think you might be here. right. I, I don't know. I'm just all saying. of it going on. Uh, yeah. So, um, but it's mid March right now, and like, so I just saying it, it's going to take a while for because you can't miss. You want to ensure that you are, you know, and then there's there's this. What pieces do we need? Do can we have we can we vouch for the kids' character? Yeah. What is what does the NIL component look like with all this stuff? So there's just a lot of layers, but you want to make sure that you're building the, the the right pieces. Maybe you take a kid to be a developmental piece too. Yeah. Maybe you're not looking for an all star. We need somebody that we can be on the end of the bench. It's going to be okay being brought along slowly. We don't need like 13 guys that are ready to play and knocking on the coach's door every day. You know, going. Why am I not getting to play? It. You, you need some guys at the back end that are like easing into this deal. Yeah, there's no question. You've got to. Uh, it's such a balancing act, and mm-hmm. and it will be a long term one for this. Why team. coaches are they're 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 part time psychologists? <laughs> no question. Um, okay, next one level we've got uh spring football starting up only a little bit of time left here spring football starts up this week uh culminate with a spring game in about a month from now in midland what's the storyline biggest storyline or lines for texas tech football going into the spring in your mind offensive line offensive line offensive line (laughs) okay that was pretty simple (laughs) Um, as far as, I mean, no, I I think that head headlines, any list, it it really, to me, it's a, B and C it's one, two, and three. Um, yeah, you, you need to figure out, you know, some of these new receivers, you need to figure out a new defensive tackle rotation. You need to figure out, um, you know, some DB components and things like that. You know, you need, you've got a punter you're trying to replace, but it it really is going to be all about the boys up front. You, you know, quarterback, you know, running back, you largely know your receivers, uh, you know, and all that. Your tight end group is is solid, but you, your your group up front, that's where all the questions are. Uh, like I said, yeah, A, B, C, you can just keep listing off letters. That's just where so much of the focus is. Yeah, no question. So, um, obviously, we got the news uh, a few weeks back that Micah Hudson would not participate in spring ball we our first chance as fans to see him will be in the fall so with that being said who are you most looking forward to getting to see uh in spring ball for the red raiders well i always go with a lot of the new pieces just because it's like but i mean john carlos miller is a guy that i've heard a lot of good things about that i'm excited to see he's one of the tight ends yeah uh, that came from elon i think he's apparently just wowed everybody um and, you know, Jalen Conyers is not going to go through spring either. He's got a right, minor injury. Right. And so he's – so you may see a lot of uh, Giancarlo Miller. Um, I think, you know, a couple of those older defensive tackle like James Hansen. Uh, then you had the the Rice kid. I mean, because lar- – like and, – and I would say all those offensive linemen, you know, like um, – uh, the 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 Memphis kid, uh, the mm-hmm. kid from Toledo. Uh, you, you added one from uh, uh, Middle Tennessee, 
Uh, you had the big junior college kid from the, the West Coast. Um, and so I, I, uh, I just feel like that, yes, I want to watch all those guys, but that that's, you know, you got a ways to go. Uh, just to, to solidify all that. And then, you know, I think like a guy like Caden Carr, uh, I think has a chance to to work his way in very early. Um, I think Dalton Merriman has a chance to be Caleb Rodkey. Uh, you know, Ty Buchanan, can he be a, a starter? Uh, you know, or, I mean, so, and then, and then do you keep Caleb Rogers at center? Yeah. You know, Clay McGuire may have a different opinion than, uh, um, than Stephen Hamby did. Sure. Sure. You know, and, and with, he may come in and go, you know what, after I've seen what I've seen, I think th this is where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so there's a lot to be decided there. I, I was about to say somebody else. Yeah. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm interested to see like Isaac Smith. Oh uh, yeah. Back from an injury. Uh, he's kind of like a, 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 a guy that I'm very high on. And then at running back, I'm kind of intrigued by a young man by the name of Anquan Willis. Oh yeah. Uh, who from Wichita Falls writer that I think has a chance to maybe be a bit of a surprise, but we'll see. I mean, you know, long way to go here, but th it's fun to be talking football. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, the new guy from Washington state, Kelly, um, the receiver there, the, Oh, Josh Kelly, Josh Caleb Kelly, Douglas, Caleb Douglas from Florida. Uh, how about AJ? I, I don't know. You may have mentioned McCarthy, the, the guy AJ we McCarty. Did. Yes. McCarty. Thank you. Uh, yes. the Baylor transfer that didn't get to play last year. There's there is a lot of new pieces that'll be interested to interesting to see in spring ball. There was a question from Mark about the Lady Raiders. We're out of time, Mark. We will uh, I'll hold it over and we will make sure we get it get to it next week. Okay, so. yeah. I mean, and real quickly, they, they know it, this was far less than what they want to do. They know they need to win. Yeah. So much of that that staff's future and Coach Gerlich and all that could hinge on you know this this recruit here in town. That if yep. you you know. So I don't know, but yeah, at it, some point it's a business and you, and, you, and coach Gerlich knows that, uh, sure. I think she had some injuries and, and they, they want to win, a lot. but it, it just didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, it didn't happen for him this year. Yep. So level this flies by as usual. Enjoy <laughs> Pittsburgh. Uh, go, Pittsburgh, uh, PA, man. go have some fun. Stay a little while if you can, a couple of games preferably. And, uh, Hopefully we're still talking some basketball when we get to talk to you. I hope to, I hope to see some folks there that listen to this. If yeah. you, if you go to Pittsburgh, get you a, a Promonte brothers sandwich. Uh, there's five locations there in Pittsburgh. It's legit. Okay. okay. Um, it, uh, but anyways, yeah, I think it's supposed to be cold there. I know you're shocked. Thank you to Cantex roofing for sponsoring this podcast. Woodman always a pleasure visiting with you and we'll talk to you next time. Maybe about going to Dallas. That would I don't be the know. hope. That's I don't the know. Hope. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Level, appreciate it. We'll, we'll do it again next week. You got it. That's Chris Level. I'm Choice Woodman. You've been tuned in to the Ask Level podcast, brought to you by Double T 97.3. You've been listening to the Ask Level podcast, powered by Double T 97.3.